Hello, my name is Carola. And I'm Martin. Welcome to Mardi Gras. The most fun time to be in New Orleans when the entire city turns into one big party and, you know, uh, what? Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Um, welcome to another video in the series of computational geometry concepts where we take a geometric concept and dive into its definition, history, complexity, and other interesting aspects. So for today, our concept is the traveling salesperson problem. This is the parade of the Groove of Toad, one of the older Mardi Gras parades here in New Orleans. This is only one of many parades, but it's one with an interesting history, especially where the route is concerned. The Groove of Toad makes it a point to pass by a number of specific locations, such as um, hospitals and uh, nursing homes, in order to bring carnival to those who otherwise wouldn't be able to participate. Underlying this is an interesting geometric question. Given the set of locations you want to visit, what's a good route to do so? The traveling salesperson problem, also abbreviated as TSP, is defined as follows. So we're given a set of sites, and let's call it S, all right? So S is a set of sites. And let's say that these sites live in the two-dimensional Euclidean space. So we'll write S is a subset of, well, we'll write this funny R for the real numbers, and then a 2 because we're in two dimensions. And let's say we have in total N sites. And now let's assume that uh, we can go straight from any site to any other. So the distance between those sites is the Euclidean distance, the distance that you would measure with a ruler. Um, so we write that with these vertical bars. Now we could also imagine using a different distance measure. Uh, for instance, if we are really designing a Mardi Gras parade, we probably wouldn't want the parade to go straight through houses, but rather stay on the streets. Uh, so for that you might want to use a geodesic distance. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, we'll assume the Euclidean distance. To define the traveling salesperson tour of S, uh, let's first define a set L, which is just the set of all possible tours, which visit all sites in S. Uh, and since we assume that we go straight from one site to another, that's essentially just uh, all different orders in which we can visit those sites, or to use a fancy word, all different permutations. So now that we've defined L, we can define the traveling salesperson tour. So what is this? Well, for a given tour, it's the sum over all edges in the tour of the length of the edge. Okay, so if I have fixed a tour T, then this is just the total length of that tour. And the TSP tour is just the minimum over the length of all possible tours. So now we are taking a minimum of this thing and we're taking the minimum over all tours that are in our set L. It will be something like this. So this is going to be a tour which minimizes the length over all possible tours. So something like this will be the TSP. The simple definition, of course, is it gives a simple way to compute the TSP tour. Just enumerate all tours, all permutations, then compute their lengths, put them all in a big list and compute their minimum. This is a working algorithm, a simple way to compute the optimal tour. However, this algorithm is not very efficient. It's an exponential time algorithm. That means the time it takes a computer to run this algorithm is exponential in the input size and the number of points. So in our example, we have n equals 5 sites. So we have 5 factorial permutations divided by 5 because we fixed the start point A and divided by 2 because we don't care about the reverse direction. So that's 5 
times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 5 divided by 2 that's 4 times 3 12 but if we have 100 sides we already have 99 factorial half which is <laughs> That's too many tours for this algorithm to be usable. The question is, how can we do it faster? The traveling salesperson problem is a very iconic and well-studied problem in computer science. And in this video we are viewing it as a geometric problem, but actually it exists in many different forms. Uh, we could have a different metric or even look at the problem on graphs where distances between nodes could be anything. Right, but for our Mardi Gras parade problem, um, we can study TSP in plain geometric graphs. And in fact, that's a, a plain geometric graphs. We have a whole other video on that. Right, but for today, we'll consider it as a geometric problem. <laughs> the origins is a little difficult to track because it's a pretty old problem, as with many natural no notions. It's hard to say. Yes, it, I mean, there were some mentions sort of in the uh, 19th century, right? Well, Hamilton, uh, William Hamilton, well, of I, course, described it. Yeah. And, and then in the in the 30s, um, like it was mentioned in the scientific literature by mm -hmm. um, separately by Karl Menger from Austria. Right, and Merrill Flood, I think, from the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. So Menger. Menger considered this a uh, messenger problem, mm -hmm. where uh, a postman has to deliver messages to some different locations and he wants to minimize the time it takes to visit them all, or to deliver all the messages. And actually he already observes that just doing this greedily, so going always to the closest unvisited location, is in general not good. Right, exactly. And uh, Flood, he considered this as a school bus uh, problem where um, there are some fixed locations where a school bus needs to pick up children and um, one wants to find the best route that minimizes the time. So the, the name traveling salesperson problem is, is credited to Julia Robinson. Ah, oh, you have the report here? It is unclassified. The 1949 report by Julia Robinson, and it's called On the Hamiltonian Game, a Traveling Salesman Problem. So TSP. TSP, exactly. So originally this Traveling Salesman Problem as an acronym, and then, you know, as a uh, backronym, it's now Traveling Salesperson Problem. How to solve the TSP problem has eluded scientists for, well, more than 20 years, even after this report. Nobody could find any efficient algorithm to solve the problem. Right, and in fact, it inspired the development of a theory of hardness um, for computational problems um, right. in the uh, 70s. The early right. 70s, yeah. Yes. Actually, in 1972, Richard Karp proved that the traveling salesperson problem is NP hard. So what does that mean, that the problem is NP-hard? Well, NP-hardness is a fundamental concept in the study of algorithms and it's linked to arguably the biggest open problem in all of computer science, the question whether P is equal to NP. And now this may sound a little bit abstract, but uh, bear with me. P and NP here are actually sets of problems. So they're classes of computational problems. Okay, so what is P and what is MP? Well, P is the set of all problems for which there are efficient algorithms. And here we'll define efficient as polynomial time. Okay, so a polynomial is a, a function of the form f of n is some constant well, times 1 plus another constant times n plus another constant times n squared 
plus another constant times n to the third plus another constant times n to the fourth plus well you can imagine I could keep going and so there's not really a limit on the, the power here so n to the power 100 is also a polynomial and for the purpose of defining the class P that's all allowed so any polynomial is fine so then what is NP? Well, the set NP is a little more difficult to define. Uh, NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial, but you don't really need to know what that means. Uh, for our purposes, we'll define it as um, the union of P and another set of problems, which we'll call X. So then what is this class of problems X? Well, it's a little difficult to define x because, well, we don't know whether p is equal to np, so we actually don't know whether there is anything in x. But if x exists, then it's a set of problems with some interesting properties. So first of all, any problem in x has the property that we don't know whether there is an efficient algorithm or a polynomial time algorithm to solve that problem. And the second property is kind of interesting. So it's the property that if we were to find an efficient algorithm that can solve a problem uh, in this set X, then we could also use that algorithm to solve any other problem in NP efficiently. So it is widely believed that P and NP are not equal, so that there are problems in this uh, mysterious set X. But so far, no one has been able to prove it. Okay, so what does all of this have to do with uh, NP hardness? Well, a problem is NP hard if it essentially has this, this second property here. So if and if there exists an algorithm for a problem which would imply an efficient algorithm for all problems in NP, then we call the problem NP hard. Then how do we know that TSP is NP hard? Well, the details of the proof are a little bit too tedious to go through here, but the general idea is as follows. We take a problem which we already know is in NP. In many cases, and also in the proof for TSP by CARP, the problem is set, the Boolean satisfiability problem, which asks whether the variables in a logic formula can be set such that the formula evaluates to true. And here our variables are x1 through x5, and they each can be either true or false. If you don't know what that means, that's fine. It's just another computational problem that's in NP. Then the idea is to prove that TSP is NP-hard, that a potential algorithm for TSP could also be used to solve set. How do we do that? Well, we take an instance of set and transform it into an instance of TSP, which is this point set over here. And then we prove that the answer to the TSP problem this tour over here gives an answer to the corresponding set problem too. And in this case, the variables are x1 equals true, x2 equals false, x3 equals true, x4 equals false, x5 equals true, and these assignments make the whole formula true. All right, so TSP is MP hard, and there is most likely no efficient algorithm to solve it. Well, that's very sad. Um, so what can we do now? Well, one thing we can do when a problem is NP-hard is use a so-called approximation algorithm. So that's an algorithm which doesn't compute the optimal solution, but it computes another solution which is close to the optimal solution, or uh, for which we can prove that it is not too far away from the optimal solution. So in the case of the traveling salesperson problem, 
It's actually not so hard to design an algorithm which finds a tour which is at most twice as long as the optimal tour. So the idea is to start with a different geometric structure, uh, the minimum spanning tree, which is also defined on a set S of sites in the plane. And the minimum spanning tree is uh, the shortest tree that connects all the sites in S. And the minimum spanning tree can be computed efficiently, so there is a polynomial time algorithm to compute the MST. And if you want to know more about this algorithm or the, uh, the full definition and some background and uh, other interesting facts about minimum spanning trees, we actually have another video about that. And you can find it by clicking right here on this link. When we have the minimum spanning tree, we can easily turn it into a tour by simply going around the tree like this. So we start somewhere and we just follow the tree around. And after we've done that, we will eventually end up where we started. And therefore this is indeed a tour. So now we have a tour which does visit all of the sites in S. Uh, so this is a valid tour. Um, actually it visits some sites even multiple times, but that's fine. But why would the length of this tour be at most twice the length of the optimal tour? So for comparison, let's draw the optimal tour of the same set of points. Well, let's do a little proof. So the statement that we want to prove is that the length of a MST tour is smaller than two times the length of our TSP. Okay, so if this is true, then this MST tour is a valid approximation because it's always within a factor two of the best we can possibly do. So what is the length of the MST tour? Well, the tour is going around the MST and as you can see, actually every edge of the MST is traversed exactly twice by this MST tour. So the length of the MST tour is exactly two times the length of the MST. So we should prove that two times the length of the MST is smaller than two times the length of the TSP. Well, so now we can just cancel out this two because it's on both sides of the equation. So we want to prove that MST is smaller than TSP. So why would that be the case? Well, by definition of the minimum spinning tree, uh, the MST is the set of edges of shortest total length which connects all of the sites in S. But now, if you consider the TSP, uh, the TSP is a tour which visits all the points of the sites in S. So it is a set of edges which connects all of the sites in S but the MST is the smallest such set. So by definition, uh, the MST is smaller or equal than the TSP. All right, and so we've proven that uh, the MST tour is at most twice the length of the TSP and therefore this is a valid approximation algorithm. Yeah, so in fact, the algorithm you just saw gives rise to a two approximation. Um, and it was already known before it was known that TSP was hard and in fact even before the concept of MP hardness was even defined. Right. Yeah, but the, the systematic study of approximation algorithms really only um, took flight after this theory of hardness was established, but uh, basically immediately, so also early 70s. Right. Mm -hmm. So in 1976, Oh yeah, um, Nikos Christofides and, um, and uh, Anatoly Sergikov um, independently developed an even better approximation algorithm for this. So it, it, yeah, for TSP, yes. So um, it also is based on the MST, the minimum spending tree, but it has a few extra steps and um, actually then arrives at a 1.5 approximation. Yeah, so they found essentially the same algorithm, both independently. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 1.5 approximation, so it means the 
algorithm finds a solution which is provably at most 50% longer than the optimal solution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but actually for TSP, it turns out one can do even better than that. Um, interestingly, we can get any approximation vector, really. Right, yes, we can get arbitrarily close. That was done in, well, again, independently discovered in the 1998 by Sanjeev Aurora, and then in 1999 by Joseph Mitchell. Yeah, actually, this was such an important discovery that in 2010, Aurora and Mitchell were jointly awarded the Goethe Prize for this discovery. Mm -hmm. If it's so hard to find an optimal route, how did they come up with this one? Well, probably it's not optimal. And the number of locations these guys visit is so small that even an exponential time algorithm is feasible in this case. Right, congratulations! You've made it to the end of another video in our series of computational geometry concept videos. We hope you enjoyed this one and learned something in the process. Yep, and so this time we looked at the traveling salesperson problem and uh, looked at a exponential algorithm for it, um, meaning uh, exponential in the number of sites that we want to visit. So that means if we add another site that we want to visit, then the runtime doubles in order to find the optimal tour. Um, and in fact, this TSP problem, we saw that it's NP hard, meaning that it's unlikely that a better solution exists. And if you do want to know more, we've put links to all of our sources in the description of the video, as well as some links to uh, a few other videos in this series. Thanks for watching and happy Mardi Gras!